In this video I will show you how to use Tuya Convert without a Raspberry Pi and achieve the same thing only with the free to use VMware player. The only additional thing you'll need is a USB Wi-Fi dongle. If you want to skip certain sections of this video, just use the time codes in the description below. Let's get started. The first step is to download VMware Player. Just use the link in the description below. Once done, you can also go ahead and install it. Installation is pretty simple as well. You can leave all settings at their standard values if you want. You'll also need a Linux distribution, here I choose Ubuntu since it's one of the easiest and most commonly known ones out there. Once downloaded, start VMware Player, then go to Player, File, New Virtual Machine and choose the Ubuntu ISO you just downloaded. VMware Player should automatically detect the type of operating system and offer you the easy installer which only takes around 5 to 15 minutes depending on the speed of your PC. Choose a name, username and password and press next. If you want, you can also give your virtual machine its own name, but you don't actually have to do this and you can also ignore this step. Just leave the hard disk size at its standard value and click next. On the next screen, click on customize hardware, then on processors and on the right choose 4 processors. If VMware Player gives you a warning here, choose less, something like 2 or just leave it at 1. The reason being that this will just speed up the installation process. Once you click on finish, the installation process will automatically start, so you don't have to do anything anymore. If you get a software update pop-up, just click on download and install and let it finish. After the install finished, you'll be greeted with a login screen, just use the password you gave it earlier. If your screen size is way too small, just minimize the window and maximize it again and that should fix it. Next you need to open up a terminal. This can be done by clicking on the lower left apps menu button and typing terminal in the search bar. You should now get a comment prompt. The first comment you have to type in is shown on screen now, but you can also find all comments used in the video description. Once the first comment finished, type in the second comment which is shown on screen right now. You may have to confirm this by pressing Y. Once the second comment finished, you can go to the GitHub page, scroll down to the installation and then copy the first comment. After that's done, simply right click in the terminal window and click paste. Hit enter and wait for it to finish downloading. Now do the same with the remaining two comments. You can then go ahead and plug in your USB Wi-Fi dongle and you should get a pop-up. Simply select connect to a virtual machine, then click on the virtual machine and hit OK. Now here's a little bit of a tricky part. It's not hard, but it's just tricky, because once you've plugged the Wi-Fi dongle into Ubuntu, it will assign a random name to it. So you have to type in if config, also down in the description of course, enter, and there you can see it. It usually starts with a W. So just double click on it, right click, copy, then go to files, to your convert, config txt. And as you can see, there's a VLAN on the second line here, just select the VLAN 0, right click, paste, and just hit save. There you go. The next comment you have to enter is shown on screen right now. This just makes sure that you have all the packets installed that you will need for the flashing process. You may also have to enter your password again. Once that's done, you're now ready to start flashing. The last comment you have to enter is shown on screen right now. Read the following text carefully, then enter yes and press enter. You may get a prompt to terminate certain services, just hit Y for both of them. You're now prompted to connect to the newly created vTrust Flash Wi-Fi network. 
You can basically use anything for this. I would recommend your smartphone for this step, since it will make configuring the smart device easier once the flashing is done. Simply go to your Wi-Fi settings, click on the VTrust Flash Wi-Fi, and that's it. Plug the device in and wait for the LED to start flashing. If the LED isn't flashing rapidly, you have to reset the device. You can usually reset those devices by pressing and holding a button. However, this may be different for your device, so just look in the manual. Once the LED starts flashing rapidly, you can proceed to the next step. Back at the terminal, just press enter and wait for a few seconds. To your convert will automatically back up the existing firmware in case something goes wrong. To your convert will now ask you which firmware you want to flash. In this example, I will use the tasmoda.bin since it's the easiest to work with. Then enter Y to confirm the selection. About a minute later, the flashing is done. You're now ready to start configuring the Wi-Fi credentials. Back on your smartphone, simply tap on the Tasmoda Wi-Fi network. A few moments later, the configuration page should automatically show up. If it doesn't show up, simply open the URL shown on screen in a web browser of your choice. Go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi name into the first text box, followed by your Wi-Fi password in the second text box. If you want, you can also change the host name to something you'll easily remember. Once you're done, simply tap on Save. Tasmoda will now reboot and automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. You can try and use the host name you just gave it to connect to the configuration page again. If this doesn't work, however, just open your router's web page and use the IP it assigned to your Tasmoda device. Some devices may need a special configuration to work. I'll leave a link down in the description below for a website where you can find such configurations. In my case, I'm using a GoSound SP111, where I happen to know that this is the version of 1.1. Simply copy the template, go back to this motor, click on Configuration, Configure Other, and paste the template into the first text box. Don't forget to check Activate to activate the template. While you're here, you can also change the friendly name to something you'll remember easily. Once you're done, simply click on save and that's it. All the functions like the power usage and the relay are working correctly now. If you have a power usage socket, don't forget to calibrate it though. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to do that. That's it. It's not as complicated as you think at first, it just requires a lot of steps. You can now upgrade Tesmoda to a more recent version if you want. You can find all the infos about that on the Tesmoda wiki. If you still have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Don't forget to leave a like if this video helped you. And if you don't want to miss future tutorials like these, please leave a subscribe as well. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a nice day!